Hey, good morning everyone. Thanks for joining me at Brett's table. Um, I have been doing a lot of television watching these last three months, probably more than I have, <laughs> I think, in my entire life. Um, so this recipe this morning is from a cooking show called, uh, well, I can't remember what it's called. Um, anyway, the chef is Raymond Blanc, and he is originally from France, but he went to the UK, uh, I think about 30 years ago, um, and now has a one or two star Michelin restaurant. Uh, so this is not a new recipe that I created, but one that looked intriguing, and I made it last week, and since it's so hot, you can see that I'm uh, not wearing a bow tie because it's just way too hot. I think it's going to be up to, to 90 degrees here in Minnesota and uh, humid on top of that. So not a fan of the heat. Um, so I got this beautiful piece of salmon. It's, uh, it was about eight inches. Uh, no, excuse me, eight ounces. And I cut half of it. I cut it in half and then I'm going to take and cut it in half again but this time cutting through uh, like a butterfly and it didn't work as well this time as I did on the other side but that's okay um, so we've got these two pieces of salmon now and I'm going to take and season them with a little um, sea salt and everybody knows where sea salt, how sea salt is harvested, right? That uh, there's these large very shallow ponds along a various coast around the world and um, when the tide comes in uh, obviously the salt water collects in these ponds and then the tide goes out and the water evaporates and then um, they take these rakes and rake off the top layer of the salt and in, in France, or in French, it's called fleur de sel, which is, translates to flower of the sea. Um, so that's where sea salt comes from. So I'm just going to add a little more to my salmon. Um, and the salmon, you know, I, when, when I buy seafood in particular, I always ask, um, you know, ask the fishmonger where where it's from, how it was harvested, um, is it harvested sustainably? Um, it's you know in salmon, is it uh, line caught, um, is it net caught? Um, you know, I like to know where my food is coming from and and how it's being harvested. Um, it was interesting, I was at the farmer's market uh, yesterday morning and I asked two different strawberry uh, farmers, you know, it was like, what, what variety of strawberries um, are you growing? And neither of them knew. And I think it's important that, you know, we know what the varieties of fruits and vegetables are, where our protein is coming from, all of these things, uh, and just don't take you know, take it for granted where we are getting our food. Um, and if we start asking whether it's the, the farmer at the farmer's market or the produce person um, at our local groceries, like where did this come from? What variety is it? Um, we, you know, we, I think that we need to know these kinds of things. So that's my two cents. So um, here, uh, Chef Blanc suggested using cayenne pepper, uh, but I am using uh, what is called a piment espalette, um, which is uh, just ground up a particular pepper. And um, fortunately, I get, I think I've said this before, but I 
actually get this um, particular jar. Um, there's this little shop in Cannes, France, that I go to uh, on my culinary tour and pick it up there. I'm sure you know you can buy it on Amazon, but at least this way I have a story. Um, and then I have some uh, organic fresh dill that I'm just going to uh, take and sprinkle the fronds um, over this, these two pieces of salmon. And last time, you know, I cut them up, but why, you know, why not just pull them apart here, pull, pull the fronds apart. And just sprinkle the dill on the salmon. Um, and dill is a, a classic combination with salmon, uh, you know, oftentimes used in grab locks and, you know, uh, make a, a dill sauce with the salmon. So, um, I just pat this into this and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to tightly roll this up. Oh, actually, no. That was, um, that was white pepper that I was using. So I need to add the espalette. Yeah, I was using white pepper instead of black pepper um, just because I think it, it looks nicer uh, on, a, on a light, light food. So now I'm going to roll this up. So I've got my two pieces of salmon here. Wash my hands constantly. So I've got my industrial size piece of, um, of heat resistant food film. And I'm going to take a piece of salmon that I have rolled up. And this is called a, a ballantine because of the shape. And you can see, and so I'm gonna take and just hold one end and tie it off because I, I don't want any air bubbles in this little roll, this little salmon roll because then it's going to float and I don't want it to float in the poaching water. So I'm just going to do this to the other side. Tie this one off. And, oops. Come on. Come back here. And just, just, I just want it to look neat. Whoops, one more. So I've got one done. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Roll it up. Tight. Get this out of the way.
Who's, anybody got any questions as I'm doing this? So yeah, I, um, I, I generally teach participation classes um, as opposed to demonstration classes because I think it's important that, you know, if I was in a, a kitchen, everybody would be doing this themselves because I think it's important to be hands-on you know, because um, it's a lot different when you're watching somebody as opposed to actually doing it. So just cut these off. So now I've got some water that I had brought to a boil over here. So I'm going to Remove it from the heat, turn it off, and I'm going to set these in the water. And see that one's got an air bubble, so that's why it's floating. And this is going to these. These are going to poach for um, about six minutes um, off the heat. You you don't want uh, then you don't want to boil them. You are poaching them in a very you know a delicate method. Um, and once they're poached, um, you know, and it, depending on the size of the roll, it you know if it's a thin roll, you would poach them for five minutes. If it's a thicker roll. Uh, you know, you might poach them for seven minutes, which reminds me I should set the timer So that we don't forget <laughs> how long they're in there. So and then after uh, After they're poached uh, I could test it with the thermometer because you want it to be about 130 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius and and then you would uh, put them in an ice bath or uh, to stop the cooking and uh, cool them off and then I served these or, or you know my lunch last week I made uh, a little salad uh, some steamed uh, new potatoes a beautiful uh, tomato that I got at uh, the farmers market and so it's kind of uh, inspired by a salad niçoise um, so it, I know it's not a traditional salad niçoise so all my friends in, in France, particularly, um, don't come after me um, because I know it's not traditional, but it's a light, you know, summer meal when it's when it's hot. I don't feel like turning on the oven um, or even, you know, sauteing anything. So this is a, a great um, alternative to uh, a great lunch. Uh, again, would love to have people over and and share the meal uh, with friends. Um, I'm actually going to um, open this uh, bottle of Pinot Noir. Um, it's this is from uh, the eastern region of France, so it's southeast of Dijon, and almost directly uh, east of Beaune. Um, so this is a hundred percent Pinot Noir. I was just reading that the um, the winery is sustainable, uh, going towards organic. Um, I think it was around since the, this winery has been in existence with the current family since the 40s, uh, and the the full the four children are now running the operation. So 100 percent Pinot. Um, I picked this up at the, the Wine Thief, uh, which is the neighborhood shop, very knowledgeable uh, salespeople. I just go in and, and say, you know, hey, Nathan, I'm, I'm making X, Y, or Z. Uh, what would you recommend, uh, you know, serving with uh, what I'm cooking? And, and they're 99.9% uh, .9 right, right on uh, with their recommendation. So... 
it's, we still have uh, two minutes left on our poaching. Um, so it's coming along nicely. And uh, see my air bubble, so do, do what I say, not what I do. Um, and you can tell, you can tell that it's, it's changing colors. Uh, it's going from dark pink to light pink. Um, so we'll just let it keep going. And then when it's done and after it's cooled down, it gets even more firm. Um, and then it's easily, uh, very easily to just slice uh, through the Ballantine and uh, serve it with, uh, like I said, a salad, some uh, boiled egg, um, perfectly dressed uh, ingredients. So, and open this bottle of wine for lunch. So, um, anybody have any questions? Uh, bring them on camera. Yes, I just. Uh, so. Um, so I just encourage you, as I mentioned before, to find out, ask questions about uh, where your, your food is coming from, whether it's a strawberry, uh, a piece of fish, uh, you know, don't, uh, you know, life is way too short to eat uh, bad food, basically. Um, so I encourage you to buy the best that you can afford because, uh, you know, either we're paying for it now or we're going to pay for it later uh, with more health issues and uh, down the road with, uh, you know, disease, uh, heart disease, uh, cancers. So any way that we can prevent uh, in, uh, sickness and stay healthy for as long as we can, uh, there it is. We're done. So let me get a pair of tongs. So here's Here's one of them that uh, looks, see it's firm. You can tell just by touching it that it's uh, firm to the touch. Here's my other one. So I'm just gonna let them let them sit there for just another minute to uh, just cook them a little more. And then I will put them in my water bath, which I've got uh, just a bowl of ice here. I'm gonna add some water, some cold water to it. And then, uh, these will go in that to, to stop the cooking uh, in a minute or two. And um, once they're cool, um, I will have uh, slice one of these up for lunch and uh, save the, the other one uh, for tomorrow's lunch. So thank you all for watching today. Um, I'm thinking maybe next week uh, to show you how to make uh, a pie or a tart dough. Um, so, cause summer fruit is in abundance right now. The cherries are going to be coming in. The strawberries are already here. Raspberries will be coming in in July. Um, I made an apricot frangipani tart. So I am, uh, editing that recipe and we'll get that, uh, posted on my blog very soon. So, uh, Tis the season for summer fruit, so um, I'll show you how to make tart dough, and you can use that dough then to make a, a, a galette, a free-form tart, or one that uh, you actually put into a removable bottom tart shell. So I appreciate all of you watching uh, today. Uh, thank you so much. 
uh, for your encouragement. Let me know uh, if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them uh, through the Facebook comment comments. And um, we will see you next week. Uh, stay well. Uh, enjoy life uh, as, as much as we can right now. Uh, love your friends and your family. And we will talk to you soon. So thanks again and uh, take care. Bye now.